Competitive Coromon has an item clause, which means you can only use one of each item per battle, so it's very important to understand all the items available to you. We're going to review everything you need to know about Competitive Coromon items, so hit the like and subscribe button and let's jump on in. The Pista Stone is one of the most important competitive items that you can use in the meta right now. You do get this item by reaching Milestone 24. The Pista Stone is going to raise your Coromon's attack by 50%, but it can only use the first skill it uses in each battle. And to clarify, if your Coromon Coromon switches out of battle and comes back in, you can select a new move. So it's very important to be strategic with the moves that you're using because if you get locked into a move that isn't effective against your opponent's team, you're doing a lot of switching and giving your opponent a lot of advantage. So make sure you are strategic with the moves that you select with the Pista Stone. The Pista Stone is best utilized with Coromon that have high attack and high base power moves. Something like Uclaw is a really good example that has a sky high base attack and moves like Head Crash and Splatter to really punish your opponent switching in or to break down walls. We also have the Almo Stone, which works very similar to the Pista Stone, but instead of raising your physical attack by 50%, your special attack will be raised by 50% using this item. The only way to obtain the Almo Stone is to reach Milestone 46 in game. Once you have the Almo Stone, Cormon like Volcadon and Swampa are really good choices to use this item with because of their high base power in terms of special attack and their high base power moves and their decent coverage. So you want to look for Coromon that have good coverage ideally and good base special attack. Both the Pista and the Alma Stone focus on boosting your special and physical attack, but the Acker Stone which is obtained at milestone 96 focus on boosting your speed by one stage. You have the same restriction as the Pista Stone and Alma Stone in that you can only use the first move that you select when you enter the battle, and this stone is best utilized for either really fast Coromon to be revenge killers, or for Coromon that are offensively potent but could use an extra speed boost to outspeed their checks or counters. My favorite Coromon to use with the Acker Stone is going to be Octo, which has the trait motivated, which means you can outspeed something and if you take it out, due to its trait you will get a plus one boost in both your physical and and special attack, allowing it to snowball to a really great cleaner and revenge killer. The Maka Stone is a defensive item that's going to boost your Coromon's physical defense by 50% and can be obtained by reaching milestone 42 in game. That 50% boost in physical defense comes at a cost. You can no longer use status skills when you have the Maka Stone equipped. In Coromon, status skills do not deal damage but they instead inflict status conditions, they can boost your stats, they can debuff your opponent or yourself. They can add weather or other types of battle effects to the match. Good users of the Maka Stone have a few things going for them. One, they typically have high HP. Two, they might have high physical defense. Or three, they may want their physical defense augmented because their typing allows them to be a good physical wall or check, but their physical defense stat is lacking, so the Maka Stone helps build up that physical defense and help them reach their full potential. Chonk Toad is an amazing Maka Stone user because of its trait Toxic Skin, which severely cripples physical attackers. In addition, it has a really good typing in water and decent HP and physical bulk. So all those things combined make it a really good example of a great Maka Stone user. We also have the Pekka Stone, which is obtained at Milestone 34 and works very similar to the Maka Stone, but instead of your physical defense being raised by 50%, your special defense is raised by 50% and you can no longer use status moves when the item is equipped. The Enhancer Gem is one of the most important competitive items in Coromon and it allows your trait to be enhanced by one stage. For example, if you had the trait Escapist, it would mean that the Coromon is immune to being trapped, and in normal circumstances, the Coromon never fails to escape from a wild Coromon. If the Coromon has the Enhancer Gem attached, it means that this Coromon speed is always increased by one stage, and it's still immune to being trapped, and in normal circumstances, it still never fails to escape from wild Coromon. This is a very powerful item that allows you more flexibility while team building, because you will be limited to one item per battle per Coromon. The Overcharger Gem will allow your Coromon to deal 25% more damage, but your skills require 5 more SP to use. The Overcharger Gem is great for mixed attackers like Ecliptor who want to use both their physical and special attack and not be locked into one specific move. Dugterra is another example of a Coromon that really benefits from the flexibility of switching between physical and special moves but still wants a little bit extra power to take out some Coromon that are a little bit bulkier. There are two support items that work in almost opposition of each other. One is the Revitalizer Gem which is going to give whoever's holding that item up to 6% of their max HP back per turn, a lot like Leftovers and the Kiwana Rock, which is going to make any physical attacker making contact with the holder of the Kiwana Rock 
take 15% recoil damage. Bulky Coromon, who will be on the field for multiple turns, setting up something like Volbrute that's going to be using Inner Peace and trying to build up stat boosts over time. Do really well with the Revitalizer Gem, getting a little bit of HP back per turn. And Coromon that are expected to take a lot of physical hits that make contact or have a trait that go well with the Quantum Rock, like Sir Pike with Spike Body. Do really well holding that item, allowing you to get multiple rounds of chip damage in a match, which can bring other Coromon into range to be KO'd later. While you'll mainly see the stones and gems in competitive play, I do want to talk about Coromon fruits because they do come up every now and then and they can be really helpful for making your team more diverse. Your fruits will fall into three different categories. One is SP or HP replenishing. The other will boost the power of one move based off its typing, so if it's a water type move or normal type move for example. And the other is more situational where it will boost your stat depending on how low you get in your HP. We won't go into every single fruit available in the game, but there will be a list down below that takes you to the wiki that shows you all items available. But an example of an SP replenishing fruit would be the mole fruit. This fruit is commonly used with Torvald, and when you near exhaustion, you will restore 75% of your SP. So if you use Bolt Bomb and completely exhaust yourself on the next turn, you'll have 75% of your SP available to you. An example of an attack boosting fruit would be the raw fruit, which will increase the skill's power when using ice type attack. So if you're using Berry Atlas and you use Avalanche for example, on the first turn you use your ice type move, it'll be even more powerful because of that Ross fruit. An example of a stat boosting fruit would be the Oki fruit, which is commonly used with Humvee. You'll get down to where you're in danger and are below a certain amount of HP. And once you hit that HP benchmark, your attack stat will increase, hopefully allowing you to sweep. There are a couple other fruits that don't quite fall into those three categories, for example the Kaido fruit or Kado fruit. It's going to allow you to survive one hit if you're at full HP. There are things like the Enet Fruit, which allow you to take reduced damage from super effective attacks. We have like the Zum Fruit, which allows you to increase your attack and special attack by two stages when hit by a very effective attack. So there's tons of different fruits and items you can use in Coromon to allow you to be more effective with your strategy. You can obtain fruits in game by looking at the different plants throughout the cities you go to. There's also a city that allows you to buy a bunch of different fruits and seeds that you can plant throughout the game. And then from there you want to cultivate them and then bring them to your PvP matches. But after watching this video, you should have a really good sense of the top items in Coromon, how to use them, and a couple of examples of Coromon that do really well with those items. Leave a comment down below with your favorite item or favorite set or favorite way to use an item. And as always, if you enjoy Coromon and other monster taming content, please consider liking and subscribing, and we'll see you next time. Alright, bye everyone.